Rosie, this is my crepe mix, and we are going to do our crepe 101 video today so you too can be a crepe pro in no time. So first things first, you need our crepe mix. Next, it's worth talking about your pan. You don't need anything special. I bought this at a big box store. It's a ceramic style pan. Nice big surface area is important. Nonstick really helps. And I like to get the pan heating up before I make the batter for the crepe mix because it doesn't have to stand. And then this way your pan's totally ready by the time your batter's ready. So we're gonna put that down. I like to start a little hot on this because you can always back it off. So I'm gonna go to seven on my stove. This is a super old stove and the heat probably changes quite a lot more than a newer stove, but for our purposes, we're gonna start at seven. And then I'm just gonna hit it with a little bit of oil. This is avocado oil. I love this for cooking because it's a super high heat. This has like the biggest beam of oil I've ever seen in my life. You could also oil your whole counter with it apparently. So we're gonna let that get heating up. So then per the instructions, there's a one cup batch. There's also a two cup batch. We're gonna do a one cup batch. Starts with one egg. Get that guy in there. Give that a good whisk, making sure that your egg is fully combined so you're not seeing any streaks of yolk in there. It's completely homogenous, the color, and you're getting some bubbles on your um, batter as well. You can also definitely put a pinch of cinnamon or nutmeg in it. We're not gonna do that today, but if you like those flavors, a little bit of clove, absolutely go for it. So then we're gonna put our crepe mix in Sure, it all gets in there. So unlike the pancake, with this guy, we're really making sure we get the dry parts into the liquid parts, giving it a very good mix. It's gonna be extremely thin, like watery thin. And if you haven't made crepes before, this might be something that feels wrong to you, but it's not. If you follow the instructions, you're gonna be okay. So it's nice and mixed in. We'll let that just take a little rest and then we'll wait for our pan to finish heating up and then we'll lay our first crepe down. So I, once I know that my pan is probably pretty close to right, we're done mixing here, I can feel the heat. It might not quite be warm enough, but we're gonna give it a try here just to kind of show you what can happen. So I like to take a pastry brush and just make sure the oil is nicely distributed and it's not pooling anywhere. If you have any gunk on your pan, like leftover eggs or something, you wanna make sure that's off for the crepes so you don't have a stickiness problem. So what we're going for here is a gentle sizzle. You don't wanna sear it like a steak, but if it's not hot enough, when you lay it down, the crepe's just gonna mush around and it won't grab. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna scoop some up, we're gonna lay it down, gently swirl our pan to get it nice and thin around. So a couple things that are important. If you put too much batter on there, you're just gonna cook a thick pancake because you won't be able to move it around enough. So in this size pan, I like to go for a third to a fourth a cup. This is a full cup, so I'm just gonna eyeball it and then give your mix a little whisk before you scoop because it can settle a little bit because it's such a thin batter. It's a little whisk. And then I'm gonna scoop out about what I think is about a fourth a cup. I have to do this lefty for some reason, and I'm a righty. We're gonna pour the batter in the middle. There you go, that's just about the right sizzle. Maybe a little hot, and then just swirl it till you get that batter to coat the pan, and if you're missing a spot, you can do like that. And then you just leave it alone and let that go for a little bit. So that level of sizzle was about right, almost on the hot side. So right away, I'm gonna adjust my temperature down I'm at about four and a half now, and I just know from practice that I like to start a little hot and back it off, because then I don't get sticky crepes. If it's too hot, what's gonna happen is it's just gonna get a little crispier than you want. It's still delicious, it's not a big deal. If it's too cold, you're gonna have this frustrating, sticky situation that doesn't lay out as well as you want. So I highly recommend starting a little bit hotter and then just backing your pan off. And it's probably something you're just gonna keep adjusting a little bit as you go, which is totally normal and fine. Edges look cooked. There's no batter loose, so we're gonna bump the edges down. And they're releasing nicely, so that's what we're going for. Make sure all of them do. And then gently get your spatula under there. Use your hands to help if you need it. Give that guy a little flip, perfect. And then it's just gonna be about 30 seconds on this side. We're gonna take it off. Let it cool, put another one down, 
fold the previous one and just do that a couple times till you get through your batter. For today, we've made this beautiful raspberry, sorry, strawberry rhubarb sauce. Have a little whipped cream. I also have powdered sugar and lemon, which is a super easy, super traditional way to eat crepes. It's something my kiddos love. So you can fill them with some whipped cream and top it. Today, again, this is one of our favorites. It's just the simplest. We fold it in half and then half again, and then just stack them in little points like this. Very simple. I'm gonna do, I'll do a little whip first. Sauce right on top, it's so summery and yummy. And then I'm gonna hit it with just a little powdered sugar because it's pretty and yummy. And then I like to just put a little bit of lemon on the side so that you can squeeze a little on there if you like. And there you go. You can now make crepes.